Hello, and welcome to the first installment of Celebrity Spotlight. Um, I'd like to thank my director, Sandy D. Ingrande, if she would come up for making this happen. There she Hello. is. Hello. <laughs> welcome and thank you. Thank you so much for making this happen. Um, uh, here on Celebrity Spotlight, uh, we single out a performer from television and movies uh, who you may not know by name, but when you see them, you know them. And their work is exemplary. So we want to showcase that work. And this very special first episode, we're going to do character actor Royal Dano. So, Sandy, if you could give me that first slide, we'll start the show. Thank okay, you. Hey, fingers crossed, Rory. <laughs> Teamwork. Let's see. Um... There we go. That's Royal Dano as uh, Abraham Lincoln. Um, he began his acting career in the early 50s, immediately establishing himself as a character actor. Tall and lanky, with a booming voice, he was perfect for a variety of movie and TV roles, even appearing on the long-running Gunsmoke 13 times. You can <laughs> go through those slides until we get to the first slide uh, in the uh, presentation, the first slide in the the sequence. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> By the way, we have a trivia question for our audience, um, and that is, uh, what character, what famous uh, celebrity did Royal Dano voice for Disney World attractions? That's the, that's the trivia question. And at the end of the show, we'll give you the answer. If you'll just click to the right there, Sandy, we'll start moving through those slides. <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> this, this is our first show. There's bound to be some technical gaps. We're, we'll get it, folks. Don't worry. As time progressed, Dano became more recognizable and definable. His parts got larger, with even cameo roles in later films becoming high spots. He continued to work until he passed away in 1994. There we go. He did a lot of westerns back in the 50s. There were a lot of westerns back in that time and the 60s. This is my favorite outfit. I love the I love this whole look. It's a whole look. I love this outfit. Yeah, he's kind of a mountain man there. Go ahead and move forward. Okay. That's him in the Alfred Hitchcock movie, uh, The Trouble with Harry. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. And that's a cool car. Look at that car. Yeah. What kind of car is that? Again, you can see is he's he's kind of tall and lanky. He's got uh, very um, gaunt kind of features. Uh, again, it made him made him perfect for uh, doing character actor work. Here's a character shot of him uh, as an Indian, a Native That's American. Awesome. Again, we'll talk about that role in a, in a little bit. Wait, is there a specific photo you lurk at? Um... Yeah, I think we got one more photo, and then we're into the timeline where his where we talk about his movies. Yes, yeah, so this was his his headshot uh, later on in his life, in his career, probably in the in the eighties. 
and the next one should Dancing be the first man. one in the uh, in the actual showcase. Yeah. Johnny Guitar, 1954. Um, Dano's character of Corey holds up to the likes of Joan Crawford, Sterling Hayden, and Ernest Borgnine. And again, it was one of his earliest uh, film roles. Go ahead to the next slide. In uh, the 1955 uh, Hitchcock movie, The Trouble with Harry, Dano was, cal was cast as Deputy Calvin Wiggs. Um, his deputy wigs would be outwitted throughout the film for comedy effect and, and for suspense because that's what Hitchcock was well known for. Um, in 1956, Dano was cast as Elijah in Moby Dick. Even though it's a cameo, um, he gives us a real intense foreshadowing of the sea voyage. Even a tinge of madness can be gleaned from uh, this minute-long uh, performance. It's one of the more memorable scenes in the movie. In Man of the West, Dano plays a psychotic gun-toting thug named Trout. Trout. <laughs> yep. Who names their kid Trout after a fish? <laughs> well, that's probably why he's psychotic. <laughs> that's my guess. So he even oh. shoots a woman. Go to the next slide. He even shoots a woman in cold blood in right in front of Gary Cooper, who then shoots him, dispatches him quickly. Oh, that's an old Western movie. Yep. Wow. In 1959. In Never Steal Anything Small, Dano plays Word Cannon, a fast-talking assistant to James Cagney. Again, a oh, much look different look outfit. from the Westerns that he's, he's accustomed to. Yeah. Again, it's a much uh, much those different look, look from like what we usually see him in. On hats. <laughs> those are actually... I um, love those outfits. Hamburgs. Hamburg fedoras. Yeah. In, 19, in the night. 1960s really nice Cimarron. That's the next one. Dano is basically window dressing for a huge large scale Western along with dozens of other character actors. He gets very little to do, but you see him a lot throughout the movie in the background. I love but in 1961, wow. yeah, in 1961, Dano would play the Apostle Peter in to Jeffrey Huntry's Jesus in King of Kings. And here is when he first meets Jesus. He's just a fisherman. And Dano carries the role with a spooky dignity and grace. Next slide, please. That you can feel throughout the movie. The Apostle Peter. Wow. Um, he's relegated to comic relief antagonist uh, in, in, in the next slide that we have but he makes the best of his character in seven faces of dr lao La dr lao i'm sorry seven faces of dr lao 1964 plays carrie i'm a little i'm a little obsessed with the hats and all these movies rory loving, loving all these hats <laughs> these are some they don't even make hats like that anymore i don't know well they do but a lot of people don't buy them nowadays because they're older older style hats those are but rad. yeah, you can you can find hats like that on the internet. Um, though hardly seen in 1967's Welcome to Hard Times, his Native American character of John Bear is hard to forget. Here he's trying to scalp Keenan Wynn in the film. Wow. In 1968, Day of the Evil Gun, another Western, Daniel has a short role as a doctor trying to manage a small town epidemic. Next wow. Slide. Yeah. Though the scene is short, Dano does an amazing job 
uh, showing lots of angst and empathy at the same time. There he's with uh, Glenn Ford. In 1969, Death of a Gunslinger, Dano plays a smarmy funeral parlor director, Arch Brandt. Next slide. We need, um, Jonathan, if you're there, we need someone to tag. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and he does his best to stir up trouble in the small town in Death of the Gunfighter. A very handsome man. Yeah. In 1969, uh, the John Wayne movie, The Undefeated, Dano makes an impression as M Major Sanders at the beginning of the film. He's a, a veteran of the Civil War. Next slide. But also John Wayne, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> he must have also impressed John Wayne because he pops up in the 1973 film Cahill, U.S. Marshal, a couple of years later. Next slide. There he is. Here he plays Old MacDonald. <laughs> and he has a farm. Um, wow. 1973. I was a baby. Next, <laughs> The next slide is the same character. A little closer. Um, he sells John Wayne a mule to ride on in this. For $50. Was this all filmed in Hollywood? Was this all at like Universal Studios back then? Oh yeah, well different studios, yeah, different studios. Wow, look at that studio! Yeah. It looks so real. Yeah, well, you know the back lot, there they uh, they they do the kind of thing. You know they make it look like the old west. Um, a couple of years later, he's Anton J. Cermak in uh, in Capone, and he goes head to head with Ben Gazzara. This 1975 TV movie, next wow. slide, uh, also had a pre-Rocky Sylvester Stallone as Frank Nitti. <coughs> and here he realizes wow. that he and his politician buddies are up against the wall with, uh, with Capone. Capone has dirt on all of them. Um, Dano also rubbed elbows with Clint Eastwood in The Outlaw Josie Wales, 1976. Oh, I love that movie. I'm a huge Clint Eastwood fan. You have no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he plays I the character of Ten Spot in the scene where Eastwood brings liquor into uh, into the bar of a town that's been pretty dry for a while, and they're all very happy. Uh, in 1983, Dana was cast as the heroic lightning rod salesman Tom Fury in Disney's Something Wicked This Way Comes. Unfortunately, the uh, the movie was a little too scary wow. for Disney audiences. It didn't make a lot of money at the box office, but uh, Dano's performance is uh, again, it's pure royal Dano. He he makes the best of what he's got, and uh, and again, he turns out to be one of the big heroes at the end of the film that helps to get rid of the dark circus. Then quickly moved on. Wow, to he really, darker he, really tones. he really embraces every character. It's like every oh, yeah. character he really. Yeah, he, he, he is a quintessential, you know, there there are no uh, small roles, only small actors. He he proves that because he takes every role that he has and he, he gives it his all. I mean, he really gives it his best. Uh, and then he quickly moved on to darker tones as the minister in 1983's The Right Stuff, where he even got to sing a sad hymn. Whenever one of the test pilots died in that movie, he would come to the front door and the, the, the women, the, the, the wives would just not want him to come to their house at all. Um, in the 1984 comedy, Teachers, Dano really stirs things up as uptight teacher Ditto Stills, who unsuccessfully debates Nick Nolte. Next slide. And that, how did they do that with his eyes? How, did, well, how does they, one they, eye look smaller than the other? Yeah, I mean, that was kind of a thing that happened with him uh, when he got older. You know, uh, he was able to do that with his eyes. That's a talent? Like, that's a skill? Wow. So, next, which is basically the same thing. It's just a little different. There he is. Um, I wanted to say that Ditto, unfortunately, expires while sleeping in his classroom, something that he does throughout the, the first half of the film. <laughs> he falls asleep in class, and when he dies, the class doesn't realize it right away. That's the joke. 
and they end up taking him out on a stretcher with, a, you know, the, the blanket over his body. Um, in House 2, the second story, yeah, Dano grabs the sizable role of Gramps. Wow. Look at that theater. Look at that next, theatrical yeah, makeup. Check out the next one. That's intense. <laughs> That is so intense. I, and the hat. I love the hat. Well, it, the thing is, is he's over 100 years old. He's been buried with a magic skull that's kept him alive. And uh, they, his grandson digs him up um, in the movie, and he's still alive. He's like 170-something years old. So um, he, he's mummified, but uh, endearing character is the highlight of this 1987 film. I'm just an old fart. <laughs> that's one of his lines from wow. the movie. And and that's the I way his voice sounded. He's got a very booming voice. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just so crazy, like how the um you know, the theatrical makeup and that they had back in the days. Um, you know, I know it's improved now. It's they have so much stuff. A lot of it is is digital, but Wow, they just really, I mean, these were like real, this was like all yeah, real this is makeup. Yeah, this and, is all makeup prosthetics. Yeah, pl you know, rubber appliances they, they put on him and then a beard and mustache. That's amazing. And everything. Yeah. Now it seems like it's like digital these days. Yeah, I even thought that when I was writing this part of this uh, 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 of this presentation, because, uh, yeah, today they probably could have done that character digitally with him, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. Dana will also go down in history uh, as the first victim in killer clowns from outer space as farmer Gene Green. Wow. Next slide. His uh, performance is a little over the top. He actually has a lot of fun with it um, <laughs> uh, until he gets zapped. <laughs> Look at that. And and he's got say, overall... I'm not going to say any more than that if you haven't seen Killer Clowns from Outer Space. <laughs> I've never seen it. Is that on the Monster Briefing? Uh, we actually well, we should do that one. They should do that one on the on the Big Monster Briefing Room. Yes. Uh, also in 1988, Dano starred as they washed up magician Uncle Ned in Ghoulies 2. He was actually doing some horror movies in the 80s, doing some scary stuff in the 80s and early 90s. Um, that was, you know, more popular back then. Um, Dano did his best uh, in the 1990s. Spaced, invader, spaced invaders to get photos of the aliens. And next slide. Look at that old camera. Wow. Yeah. 35 millimeter. Before blowing them up, of course. <laughs> It was 1990 when Dano appeared in Twin Peaks as Judge Clinton Sternwood. Clinton Sternwood. We know a Judge Stern. Yes, <laughs> we do. Uh, yes, we do. Um, he certainly fit in with the, uh, the ensemble cast of this memorable show. Next slide. And definitely uh, outfitted to fully showcase Royal Dano at his best. <laughs> Dano's final film was, uh, or final final film role was Digger Holt in the Stephen King, uh, The Dark Half in 1993. Oh, wow. Fortunately, this was his final he role. Actually worked, he film. actually worked with Stephen King. Yeah, the Stephen King movie. Well, yeah, you know, and he probably did meet Stephen King because I know for a fact that Stephen King used to like to visit movie sets when they were making his movies. He sometimes would get put in as a small character himself, like a truck driver or, you know, a, a clerk in a store or something. Like that. Yeah. If you look in the Stephen King films, he's somewhere in there usually a um, lot of them. So Daniel wow. probably got a chance to meet him. And this was his final film role. Dana would die in May, 1994 of a heart attack um, just, just 48 days after his son, Royal Dano Jr. died of liver failure. And there's their gravestone. They are both interred together at Los Angeles National Cemetery. They are survived by Dano's other son, Rick Dano, who is also a performer. Next slide. Wow. And he, wait, he was a sergeant in the U.S. Army? 
Uh, yes. And his son was wow. in the Navy. His son was in the Navy. So they both served. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see. Can you go back for the, to the first picture that you showed? <laughs> there she is. Yes. Because um, sure. we're going to have the trivia. We're going to answer the trivia question. Okay. We have Did anybody trivia. get it? Royal. Yeah. What 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 famous celebrity, historical celebrity, did Royal Dano voice for the Disney theme parks, Disneyland and Disney World? Let's we'll see if anybody gets it. Is, are, do we have any comments? I'm not seeing any comments. Um, I, we had a couple from Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Um, it says Facebook user. Some a Facebook user is tagging. I'm not sure who it is, so they're tagging for us. So thank you, Facebook user, for tagging. We love you for that. Thank you. An um, impressive career. Is this the one? No, no. Go go a little further back, and go. Keep going. There it is. Oh, Abe Lincoln. <laughs> yes, the answer, of course, is Abe Lincoln. He is the voice of Abe Lincoln in the Hall of Presidents. Uh, at both parks, and there was another Lincoln uh, uh, show that they would that they did that was specifically Lincoln that he also voiced the character of Lincoln, because uh, Walt Disney thought that he had the voice that, you know that uh, that was perfect for Lincoln, from what he had heard. Because again, he has that very deep, resonant voice. You know. Well, and his eyes, like he's got the perfect eyes. Well, eyebrows and, again, and everything. We're, we're talking him voicing an animatronic of Lincoln, you know, a robot <laughs> that's talking as Lincoln in the Hall of Presidents. And again, in that other Lincoln show that they did in the 60s and early 70s. So, yeah, he was quite uh, he was quite the character actor. And again, I thought he was perfect for the very first episode of Celebrity Spotlight. So thank you all for joining us. Um, again, I, as, as I told Sandy, this would go by quickly and it, it probably wouldn't go 30 minutes. And I was right. <laughs> so uh, again, this little nod to the work of Royal Dano, um, a, a very, very good character actor. Again, whatever role he, he took, uh, whatever role he was given, he made the best of it. And uh, again, for that reason, he's memorable. When you see him, you go, oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> and that's what Celebrity Spotlight does. We take that guy or that girl, you know, that you don't know by name, maybe, and we give them a bow, as they say. And with that, we will bow out. Thank you again, Sandy, for directing the show. Thank you, everybody. And, uh, and we want to know, what, uh, what do they win? What do we win if, they, if it, no one gets the trivia? Um, <laughs> no prize then. <laughs> I'm going to try to get some stickers. I'm going to try to get some stickers made up for the show so we can give some stickers out to the winners. Uh, no, oh, no winner today idea. though. So we'll get some stickers with the celebrity spotlight logos on it, and uh, and we'll give them out to the winners of the trivia questions. Again, we'll have a trivia question at the beginning of every show, and then we'll give the answer at the end of the show. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, next week um, we're going to have another episode. Um, not sure who the Rory's um, going to feature, but we'll, 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 I'm we'll always going to keep that a secret that. until showtime. Okay. I just thought that well, there's I, Maddie. I, I, Maddie I, showed up. Hi, Maddie. Yeah. So again, thank all right. you all for watching thank and you, we'll see you next time on Celebrity Spotlight. Bye everybody. Thank you.